Tobias, we've spoken many, many times about many, many things in the world. Um, we obviously <coughs> have you on today to talk specifically about this. The one, the one thing that, that, that frustrates me as a 58-year-old is it seems to me, and I'm allowed to say this, that today's generation moan and bitch about the smallest and most inconsequential things. When you look back at the sacrifices made, he said, did Nick, 16 and 17 year olds who lied about their age to sign up and potentially thousands gave their lives to give us the country and our freedom that we have today. How I wish I could drag so many of today's generation, younger generation, to understand just what the D-Day anniversary and other things like that mean, Tobias. Don't you agree? Yeah, there's a powerful message there. It's absolutely right that the election is placed on pause as the nation reflects and salutes the bravery of a generation that did step forward, displaying such courage and determination has just been uh, reported in an operation the size and scale of which had never been seen before and would pave the way to changing the course of the war. Uh, these 50, this 80th anniversary D-Day events are, over the next couple of days, are not just about recognizing the sacrifice. I think I absolutely agree, but it's a stark reminder of our duty today to continue to defend those very same freedoms that our grandparents, great-grandparents had to defend. And sadly, those same freedoms are once more under threat. We speak, have spoken so often about storm clouds gathering once more. The world order is being eroded. Yeah. The world is not at war, but in the same sense as our forebearers witnessed, it's never been so unstable since World War II as authoritarian states start to rearm, align, and deliberately pursue a competing vision of where our world should go. So you're absolutely right. Marking this 80th anniversary of this incredible maritime effort and the feat that would turn the tide of the war is also about reminding ourselves of what happens when we turn our backs against Tenery, where we don't stand up and defend what's important to us. And as a, as a veteran, Tobias, personally, man to man, what does today mean? What do the next couple of days mean? I mean, we, we, I, my old man used to have ingrain it into me about, you know, the armed forces and how we should absolutely respect the, the, the liberty that we have. And I, I don't see that in society anymore. Maybe I'm old fashioned. I'm proud of that, to be perfectly honest. What, does, what do the next couple of days mean to you as somebody who put that uniform on and represented their country, fought for their country? I can't help thinking, like many who served in the armed forces, that I was influenced by my grandparents. Um, my uh, grandfather was part of the uh, the D-Day the landings. He was in the parachute re regiment. He jumped um, over Normandy and he never talked about it. And sadly, he's no longer uh, with us. But I'm sure that I was influenced in seeing the berry that he proudly had on display at home and those medals uh, as well. I had the fortune as Defence Minister five years ago at the 2019 anniversary event in Portsmouth to witness and speak to these veterans that were so enthused to uh, commemorate what had happened, uh, but also cautious because of that emotion um, that, of course, it would trigger. I was with hundreds of veterans, Commonwealth vets. We then, after Portsmouth events that you've just been describing there, we all jumped on a large cruise ship went across to Normandy, to Sword Beach and to Bayo Cemetery. It was six hours across. And I have to say, they, they drunk me under the table. They were just so <laughs> enthused about being together again, but also very emotional about what it all meant, recognizing just the scale of sacrifice, the fact that they made it and many of their friends did not come back. So well put, Tobias. Um, just before we let you go, um, that's the D-Day anniversary today. One of those examples, as I said, about, about how I think the younger generation could look back. One of the main news stories today is the British troops, and you and I have talked about this, about how our, our army uh, under successive governments has been stripped bare. Find out today the British troops could earn up to 15 grand in a pay hike under new rules that will let them join Australia's army. In Australia, I'd love your thoughts as an ex-defence minister. Hugh Emigre, a soldier in Australia, earns more than 30 grand. They get a £15,000 pay rise. What in the name of the Lord is going to inspire anybody to join the British army? that has been stripped bare anyway. Now you can go how many thousand miles and double your salary to buy a sell wood. Yeah, uh, I mean, so many aspects that we can talk about the state of our armed forces, but it fits into that bigger picture that you and I have discussed many times. I dug out an article that I wrote back in 2019 where I called for an increase in defence spending of 3%. And that was, what, five years ago because 
you know, I saw those storm clouds gathering again. I saw where the world was actually heading, but also the state of our armed forces and the need to upgrade our defense posture, which includes pay uh, as well. I'm actually pleased. Normally, elections are all about the economy. That's what people focus on. This time, very much, it's also about our security. It's about the wider context we find ourselves in. GDP, half of our GDP is affected by international headwinds. Boy, have we got a bumpy decade ahead. And I'm actually pleased that everybody is now looking more carefully, making greater commitments to absolutely improve our armed forces in the way that you describe. Brilliant.